Hey guys, on today's episode, I am going to show you how to block everything you need for a light bearing inside the waistband holster is what it's pretty much going to be. Uh, this end product that we're doing, it's a uh, Glock 19 with a Streamlight TLR1 HL. And uh, what we're doing is we're actually going to be doing a G-Code thigh rig. It's going to be uh, FD fall right hand, suppressor height sights with a rubber thumb snap and uh, RMR cut. So I'm going to uh, kind of walk you through it and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I've been doing this for about a little over four years now and uh, these things are just second nature. So I'll kind of start off with uh, everything I got here. We have your widgets. I got these from uh, DIY. Uh, you can find them on their website. Pretty freaking awesome. Along with these guys uh, for blocking for channels. Um, so I'm just really gonna get to it. Uh, so generally I start, uh, I will put the widgets on first. They are, they go with each side. You can't put the right one on the left and so on and so forth. And blue tape is my best friend. Uh, I set up every single mold each time and I break it down each time. Some people think it's a waste of time, but I uh, verify mold fit after and it seems to work for me. So I'm just going to bust this out and uh, show you how to do it. So we'll go from there. You always want to channel to the highest points. And then I put everything right inside. Go. Then I like to do about six to seven layers per side. So there's six right there. Yeah, I'll just flatten it down a little bit. And then I'll do another one right across here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I'll wrap it around so it holds it, and then flip to the other side. And then repeat that process. We'll also have to block out for the slide catch. And again, for the final one, I like to go wrap all the way around. Okay, this also needs a sight channel that's suppressor height sights. Uh, I normally use two different dowels here. Uh, let's see here. Got one dowel right here. I cut out a channel for the front sight to sit in. Boom, like so. Uh, and you flatten the bottom, that way it doesn't roll and pivot on you. So for suppressor height sights, you can actually see the difference. I use this guy, it's hollowed out, and we will put it on. And you want the tape on this to be pretty tight, otherwise it clamps down in your sight channel. Although it's personal preference. I like it this way, it's the only way I've done it. And then I just push down in here. This is verify. All right. Then there's one more thing this guy wants. It's just gonna be a couple. This is getting a rubber thumb snap. So we're gonna block that out. 
And then this is also getting an RTI plate because it is mounting to this G-code plate right here. So once we get that all set, then we'll go on from there. So this, let's see, he's doing a 34 plate. I have these labeled 33, 34. I generally use a 34 for the right hands and uh, 33s I use for the left hands and 35s I use for like if you want them in the center. Uh, I personally like the 34, so that's how I offer them. So 34 is gonna mount this way. What I try to do is you got your finger right here is where your purchase is gonna be. So I try to keep this just under it. Uh, so it could float in here just a little bit. And then it's gonna go right about there. So I will tape that down. And I like to use the edge of the pencil to get down in there pretty good because it helps out with your lines. If you have a really tight uh, piece of tape, then your lines will suck on it. It looks like you didn't heat it up enough or you don't have enough pressure. So I like to avoid that. All right, and then we're gonna do this and that's gonna have to be on both sides. So we got this guy, it's gonna sit here and then this is gonna sit here. There's two ways to do this. Uh, I personally, I use a chunk of aluminum I got at Home Depot and I cut it to size. And what I do is I'll put it underneath and then I cut it out. I'll show you in another video. And then I slide this in and then I put two bolts there. So all you see is the two bolts and the rubber coming out. You don't see the rubber on top of the Kydex because I think it looks tacky. And uh, it's just cleaner, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and block that as well. Uh, you might need a bunch of little shit to hold some of this stuff in place. If you do, I have a plethora of wood. I'll actually show you. i got wood and metal for everything. I'll fix this again. And then I will uh, go from there. So let's try and hook this up. This you want spaced enough so when you grab it, you can hit with your thumb. So looks like I want it at least there. So it's going to go right there. So I definitely want something underneath it because otherwise it's going to bend if you could see that. So I will find something I have here. Well, actually, sometimes I'll grab it. I use a, a rubber bushing. A lot of times just a simple rubber bushing like this will give you the height you need. Like so. Now this is going to be RMR cut, so I don't want it too high up. So what I'll do, once I find the spot for that, tape it in its place. And then this is going to go in. And then the pressure will even it out. And there's that one. So now we have to figure out where we want this. So that snap's going to go here. And we don't want it too, too tight. So it looks like we'll, if you can see that, looks like we'll go around here. And about there as well, throw it. It's good to me because this can always be trimmed too. So, so we'll do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bump it up a little bit. I don't like that blocking. It's too short. Again, my plethora over here. Actually, I just used a piece of metal. There it is. So I'll bump that underneath it, place it where it's fine. And that's going to go, again, conscious of the RMR cut.
All right, now you have your finished blocking. Um, there's one more thing we need to add, which is going to be the retention plate. Uh, since this is going to be an OWB, I mean, even for an inside the waistband, I'm doing a taco style. So taco is when you take one piece and go all the way around with it. Um, so yeah, I will find my plate and get right back to you. All right, we are back. So I found my plate. I just moved my shop. So uh, this is the retention plate I use. I mark each one and I put it with a uh, rivet through it. That way I can hang it up with the, uh, the firearm molds. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll place this in. Okay. And like everything else on here, I'll mold it, center it, and then throw the tape on, and then get it to everywhere I need it. So to lock it down, I'll do uh, near the trigger guard, and then I'll do the muzzle. Right. And then what I'll do is I'll run a big guy from here to here and then another one on the other side and then clean it up like so now this is 100% ready to press all right All right, so I cut my piece of FDE fall. What I do is cut it so it's a little bit past it. All right, so it's gonna sit right there. Then what I do is I lay the firearm, the mold on it, and then I measure about an inch to the right, roll it, and then I do about an inch to the left. So, and that's guarantees I got enough room because you're gonna have some shrinkage. So, throw this in here. It's not preheated or anything because I really don't give a shit. And you gotta make sure your foam is on the top. You see my foam right there. The reason being is you don't want hot kydex hitting uh, cold foam because it just sucks the uh, heat right out. And I'll give you a quick peek actually while that's warming up on my presses. These are two home built. They are motorcycle jacks. I actually have them on carpet so I can kinda slide them around on the wood floor here. I have a pretty large dank shop. But anyways, so the press is uh, one inch pipe. It's, uh, oh God, 30 inches tall or so. I have a little shelf right here that comes out. And then, like I said, motorcycle jack, and it does like 5,000 pounds of pressure, fully loaded, but you know, I snap molds left and right. And I have, uh, I have 200 of these things, or 210 or something like that right now. You can see them all right here. So, as this is heating up, because I'm doing it in a toaster oven, even though I have a heat press right there, I, I still like my toaster oven. I don't know why. I'm just used to it, probably because of the three years doing this. Four year, four and a half years, sorry. So, um, get the glove ready. Once it hits about 240 to 260 degrees, anywhere in there, depending on when I check it, you actually start to see it bend. Uh, once it hits in there, then what I'll do is uh, I turn it around so it eats evenly. I take it out once it heats uh, to 350 degrees. Uh, sometimes it goes over, sometimes it, you know, I melt it because I absolutely forget. But I will let you know. I'm probably gonna fast forward through this until I do some of this stuff and we'll definitely see. Measure it right now. Probably gonna be 110, 180. I gotta double that. All right, we're at 225. So I'll just take it out, flip it, put it back in. So, see, 230. It was. Let's see where we're at now. 337, almost there. So, what I'm going to do, show what I do here. 347, just wait a little bit longer since it has a uh, flashlight attachment. The hotter you are and the more pressure you are, the more definition, the better it looks. So probably I'll take it out once it hits about 360 or so. And we're there. All right, so personally, drop the bottom foam. Grab the Kydex. Throw it on there. And this is my trick. Stretch. Hold it. Throw it on. And then throw it in, 
And then I used to do this with a um, an impact gun. And it got to the point where I would snap things like molds. And obviously, you know, these things are $60 a piece. And when you bust six or seven of them, you know, there's like five, $600. So I'm good. So I like to do it by feel to know when to stop. And got that sitting in there. We'll be in there for about eight minutes, but I'll show you the rest of my dirty bench. I got uh, the beginning here, main area, then moves to vacuum forming, got my shirt press, brand new molds from Tony and Judy at uh, Multi Molds, thank you guys, I appreciate that. Vacuum, a couple more molds from Plan B, all my, uh, <laughs> these are all my uh, retention plates I have to organize because I just moved, so I'm packing, or unpacking. Scroll saw, I love this thing, but I'm going to upgrade to a, um, a a band saw, so I can't wait for that to come. Yeah, there's a grenade launcher right there, just because I can. Bubba's holster mold, AR-15 molds, those things are awesome. Then we got my belt sander, love that thing. And sorry about that, I had a phone call. Uh, this is my uh, setup area, so I got all the bins of all the hardware that I use. And yeah, about it. So once that comes out of the press, it's in, still in there. Once it comes out, then uh, we'll go from there. All right, it's been a few minutes, so now we're going to uh, pull it out and see how she looks. Boom. Good. I like it. Take a peek at the other side. Oh yeah, looks good. Piece of hair. Not bad for foam. Then I'll show you how I work this. Cool. So first, what I'm gonna do. Take this and figure out how I want it to look, whether I go straight across or we go angled. Me personally, I always like angled. So, and we got the suppressor height sights. So, we'll go probably just a little bit more. And then we'll go flush there because it matches up right here. All right, now my retention point. It's going to be this spot right here. So I'll always put the screw one there and one directly underneath it. We'll go flat there. Come out. And then what I'll do is I'll pop the mold out. I'll pop the retention plate off. And then I lay the mold over, or the firearm or whatever I'm molding over it. And what I like to do, I'll take this off too. Overlay it, and then I'll check the contour and the trigger guard. So it's going to go right there. And I personally like to go parallel, and then bump down. So because this has the uh, thumb brake on it, it's going to come up. It's going to continue past this because I want to keep this area right here. And I'll explain why. Go to this site. That's good on both sides. And then I'll put this down and I'll go right along this edge. This guy wants an RMR cut, so RMR, I'll follow that up. So we'll go to at least right there. Extend past a little bit and then I angle it. And that's what it's going to look like. Then I'll take a rough guesstimate. Boom, boom. I don't think it's going to cut it. And then we'll go ahead and cut it on the bandsaw. 
All right, we are ready to cut. off the bandsaw all right starting to take shape now because it's uh, RMR cut uh, generally I'll cut it and then uh, smooth it out right there but what I'm actually gonna do with this is um, I'm gonna do it with the Dremel and cut it by hand uh, that way I don't cut the top of this off or cut the top of this off that way it looks uh, pretty much better so I'll swap you over to this side and go from there And that's just following the body line. And then the mark where I want it. And then same thing right here. Try to match the angle. So coming along, move these guys, a couple G34s, carbon fiber and Rhodesian, looking good so far. Those have to be done tonight. Alright, so my next step is going to be this guy. So what I like to start with is the um, flashlight area, the optic, and then uh, pretty much I'll flatten this out, flatten this, and then it boom, boom. I won't hit in here, but then I'll hit right here to here. I won't hit right here to here. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll do the rest by hand, um, and I'll explain that uh, as well. over here you gotta get face mask on because really don't want to breathe this shit in and what we're doing so this is a 240 grit dremel i love i love it and it's what i've always done uh three dremel setups cutting wheel this and then the uh cutting carbide bit so i'll get going Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, then another trick that I do that I know some people don't do is I'm actually going to bevel the inside edge and then bevel the outside edge. So I know some people don't do that, but I like to. Right, so the outside, I'm going to the inside. Right. Then from here, grab my knife. I cut out all the crap you don't need, all the burrs. That's it. And then from here, take a 240 grit sanding sponge. I got from Home Depot. They're like $4 a piece. I love these things. Uh, they don't last terribly a uh, long amount of time, but they're still pretty good to use. Clean myself up a quick second. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Give this a quick hand buff. Uh, they sell them out there for um, you know your buffing wheels and stuff like that, but I have them. I just haven't set them up. They're from uh, Spiderco, I believe, and uh, I purchased them off of uh, Knife Kits or Holster Smith. So that's where I get all my stuff from. Absolutely love them. Uh, I do get my hardware from DIY sometimes. Um, depends on what's going on, really. But I like to get in every nook and make sure it's super smooth. That way you don't catch anything on it on your firearm. You don't catch anything with your hand. Nothing catches on it. So I do it all the way around the outside. And the inside. And then clean it up. And that gives me, you can see, a matte finished edge. I don't like shiny edge, it's personal preference. Put it however you want it. All right, so now we'll go back and uh, measure things out to drill and cut and riches. All right, so I got everything laid out on the table here. So again, Glock 19 with TLR1 and suppressor ready RTI plate, the whole shebang. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to throw it in there and check my lines. So yeah, it looks pretty good for the RMR cut. RMR stops right here. So I always go a little bit extra for clearance. And then, um, yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit more sanding, a final spot I didn't like. But other than that, I, uh, you reinsert the firearm to drill. And I will uh, drill those. So, there we are for the retention. Now we're going to go on this side. So we know this is going to go, boom, right there. So I threw the uh, the button in. That way you can see it. Get this going. There we go. So I'll attach it. Personal preference. You want it pretty much 
at the end poking out so I line the button I line this button up with the end of the slide I do that for for all of them and then what I'm gonna do is fold that over but for now I know this is going right there so I will hold it and drill those without going into the second side because it sucks when you mark up the other end. So, all right, so that's good. And what I'm gonna do is I'll change bits again. I'm gonna find my 33 plate. I like 34. So I've got my 34 plate. I'll square that up right where I want it. Verify this goes through. Okay. Hold it in place. Well, it helps if I put the bit in right. So I got that one. All right. Line it back up. go three indentations I'll take the actual bit I was using and again don't want to hit the other side all right so this side is drilled so I also have my uh, countersink bit on a second drill I'll go ahead and Clean up those holes. All right. And what I'll do is I'll clean up the insides as well. Now, the shitty part about making tacos like this is you have to do, you can't clean up the holes before you bend it. And I'm not going to unbend it. All right, I'm back. I had a phone call. So now once all the holes are drilled, I'm going to start mounting some shit. And I absolutely lock tight everything. Except the retention screws, because you don't want that. Although I do recommend that you put them where you like them, and then you lock tight them. Lost the nut on that one. Crank it until I feel the bolt come through. You don't want it to extend too much, but you also want pressure on the rubber bushings. Boom. And then what I do is I'll check spacing and the fitment. Plenty. Take that off. And then what I'll do now is the retention. And this is why I take the tape off each time. So we do a quick. Oh, that's nice right there. Well, let's tighten it up a right hair. Like a redhead see here. All right, so. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably go a little bit more. So I'll get it to where I like it, personally. Go a little 
side around this end. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, and then what I'll do, so we got this guy. So I'll see what we have in here. I'm not gonna use any rubber bushings on this end because I always feel that we don't need it. But I'm going to. Relieve some pressure. Yep, that's the right one. Okay. Look at the screws. Lock tight them. All right, I like that. So now, throw the gun in. And I don't want it super tight against it because the retention is gonna hold it, but I want it enough. So I'll probably put it right there. Now I see that one right there is perfect. And I'm gonna go right there. So it'll be right there and right there. Okay, just verify I have this on there again, yep. I normally use a punch, but like I said, I just moved shop, so I have no idea where it is. it so bucket right all right so this is gonna go here and here which means we could cut this shorter out our bit again I'm gonna drill this one and the next one again clean clean then I'll get inside with my razor, because my drill bits are dull, so they leave shit on the inside. All right, boom, there we go. Now what we have to do is, I don't like to put it on the outside because I think it looks tacky as shit. So what I'm actually gonna do is Dremel it. So I will be right back. All right, and we're back. So what I did is I just took the Dremel, cut the slot, and again, I'll just clean it up real quick. Get burrs out of there and shit. All right, now, like I said, I think it looks like shit mounting it on the outside, and that's how I used to do it. And then I just, I don't like it, because you see that, and then the bolts, and then whatnot. So what I started doing is, boom, do it on the inside. And that way you just see two bolts. And then on this end, I actually have it so, uh, it's deeper so that uh, the nuts don't hit the side of the frame. So, what I'll do, because I'll get shorter bolts that it comes with. A couple smaller Chicago screws. Yep, all right. And for the rubber stuff, I always throw the bolt through first. Only 
because it's much, much easier than to shove the Chicago screw. Now, what I want to do first is I'm noticing that even these screws are still too long, so I'm not even going to use these. So I'm going to grab something else and then I'll be back for that. So I will not use these because then it'll just be tacky and it could scratch it. All right, what I did is I'm using finish washer and these little guys, they're uh, tapered. So I'll throw these in. I'm not going to throw the Loctite on these ones first because it just doesn't work that way. So what I'll do is I'll throw the Loctite right inside the barrels. Wrong side, dummy. All right, and there's one. And this one's gonna be a little bit harder. All right, I got it on there. Got it where I liked it. All right, so now uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna spray them down and clean it, and then uh, I'll do a test fitment and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so my go-to, rim oil. So I'll do a pretty much a light scrub clean it up and get all my pencil marks off and debris from my bench go on the inside all right it's also going to go through a wash i'm going to you know clean it and then uh I blow it out with an air hose, get anything out of the inside, like the, uh, the channel or anything like that. Final walkthrough, I notice there's a little piece of gunk right there. And, um, yeah, so here we have a G-code setup, RTI 34 right hand, and uh, I'll actually put it on. And uh, already verified, doesn't hit the slide. And you just set it up, like so. I personally like it so there's a little bit like that because the retention is going to hold it. But of course you hit it, pop, pull. I personally like the mechanical ones, but this is a sweet setup as well. So I'll show you what exactly it's going on. I actually don't own a 19 right now, so I'm not, I can't use the real firearm. But it uh, is what it is. So G-code setup. Throw it right on. This isn't adjusted for my leg, so bear with me. tight as shit but unlock it throw that in there boom you want to change it out swap it like so so you sit here and and then relock it so pop pull boom and you got it and that's all she wrote Again, thanks for watching. My name is Iggy Falcone. I'm the only operator of Faltech Unlimited. Uh, you can follow my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Faltech Unlimited. You can follow me there. My website, Faltech Unlimited, LLC.com. Any requests, comments, concerns, go ahead, shoot me a message, and uh, we'll take care of them. Stay tuned. Subscribe. I'm going to do a lot more videos on what I build. We'll see you around.